I was looking through and saw that your brother published a new video about how to avoid being a micromanager. And that hit kind of close to home from some previous people that I worked for. So let's jump into that. What, how do you, how, how would you introduce or explain to someone that they're a micromanager and help them to learn to delete those practices? <laughs> That's a great question. It's funny, I was just having a coaching session yesterday with an executive who had this same con, you know, same kind of conundrum because they're struggling with this battle of how do you know when you're asking too many questions, when you're diving too deep? And it was their fear that, am I becoming a micromanager? Because I'm trying to do this trust but verify uh, piece of things. So I think first off, you have to really define what is a micromanager? And I think fundamentally a micromanager is a leader who is trying to be aware of every detail that their people are doing. It is an impossible task. Now, what is a good leader supposed to do? Because we're not just say, okay, good luck. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you in a week or just give me an update as it goes along. Because is that really good leadership? And the biggest difference between a micromanager and a good leader is the frequency at which you do those deep dives. The experience of deep diving with your direct reports or your superiors yeah. is a subjective thing. So it can be a little bit, it, it's a little bit different for each individual. So therefore being cognizant of that is also a, a big quality. I mean, step number one is realizing frequency can be overwhelming. Yes. Step number two is understanding the individual and what they need uh, more than what they want, but also being aware of what they want. Yeah. I think you touched on some really key points there. It's recognizing you're, you're not going to do it the same way for everybody. All right. And that's a big shift in, in, frankly, in leadership philosophy is it's more of an individualized approach. And you might not be doing the same frequency or the same depth of a dive for every individual on your team. And that's okay. It's based on experience and based on level of trust, history of prior audits or deep dives. I think mm -hmm. audits have been given this, this horrible trend. I hear the word audit and it almost kind of makes the, the, the back of your, your, your the hairs on the back of your neck stick up, but it's, they're just, they're checks, they're verifications. So maybe we don't use that term, but you're able to communicate, hey, it sounds like things are going really well. Help me understand what you're basing that assessment off of. How would you advise a manager that's maybe, again, newer manager, middle manager, or whatever, that worked with a team that was at the middle of the road, was your steady eddy guy, but wasn't at an elite provider or delivered elite results. And now he's forced or tasked to manage people that were better at his previous job than he was or she. Yeah. So you're asking about how do you lead a team that may technically be more competent than you? Yes. Yeah. And this happens a lot, especially as you get higher up in, in leadership where they start combining departments you know, this may, there may be an administrative services lead and they're now they're over finance and the HR is rolling up under them and they've got fleet management as you know, all these diverse uh, areas of expertise and you're supposed to now lead them. And so one, it's being okay with not being the smartest person in the room or the most competent person in the room for that task. Are you okay being that individual? If you're not, then you are going to have a ceiling that's much lower. Talk a little bit about how individuals get their feet wet in terms of being a leader. In other words, how do you ease yourself into the water if you know your career is going in that direction? And it really touches on the theme of we all have the opportunity to be leaders and we all do have a leader within us. Yeah. And that, that last phrase you just shared, Paul, we all have that leader within us. I, I firmly believe, you know, I really do. And it's a recognition that there's not just one kind of leader. And maybe that's, that's a tangent we can explore even further. But to your question of what can an individual do to kind of 
dip their toe in to, to get a little bit accustomed to it. One thing I think is recognizing that development and progress, and we could, we could talk about it at a, at a human level, we could talk about it at a skill development level. It is rarely this continuous, just nice little positive slope <laughs> of oh, development. Man. It's usually more of what we'll refer to as a stepwise progress in which, you know, maybe subtle to no progress for a little while. And then these opportunities hit where there's big jumps and then you kind of go along and then the big jumps. So it's being prepared that sometimes it's diving in a little deeper than you might be comfortable, but mm -hmm. it's trusting that you have the ability to do it and being willing to reach out to those around you for that support. I think what you're going to open up is now we have a whole new coach or um, consulting category of what's your bottom line? What's more effective for you to run your business, having office space, working remotely and things like this, as well as um, coaching and consulting people applying for a job and their negotiating skills of saying, I will do this working remotely versus this if I have to come to the office. So I think it's going to be an interesting transition from the business standpoint and the employee standpoint. What do you think, Peter? Oh, I, I completely agree. I think this, this massive social experiment that we've been discussing for the last 12 plus months is just beginning. And the ripple effects are going to be profound. And any organization that feels like, okay, we're going to flip the switch and go back to how it was, they're not going to be around in a few years. That's just, it's, it's not the case. The workforce has forever changed.